All right, so this is just going to be a super short video um, showing how to add a hard drive or SSD to this Acer Travelmate B117 series model N16Q9. All right, so I'm not going to be taking apart the whole thing. We're just going to check the hard drive. For some reason, the built-in SSD um, isn't booting. So I don't know if it's the SSD that's bad or the... Um, or the OS is corrupt on it. Anyways, we're using a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver to remove these screws. Um, it looks like they're supposed to be held in under the cover because there's these little washers in it. So I don't know if somebody took this out before, but I believe normally when you unscrew this, it should hold the screw into place and you shouldn't pop them out like this. Um, anyways, we're gonna pop this cover off just like that. Very simple. And then there's a hard drive slot in here. Um, thing is, this looks like there's not really anything to hold it down to secure. So this is a two and a half inch SATA SSD. Um, they call it that. It's not, it doesn't actually measure two and a half inches, but it's a two and a half inch SATA SSD. So you just get that and then you just slide it into place just like this. And then you can go ahead and put the cover back on. Very simple, easy to upgrade and replace. Make sure it's pushed in enough that this piece, when you close it, doesn't like go on top. It needs to go behind here, and that's supposed to um, keep the hard drive from sliding back out and moving around. Okay, so this is, for some reason, not wanting to go in right. I don't know if we have to kind of hold this up slightly to make it. I don't think that's going to even be possible. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to be possible. So this for some reason they designed it it doesn't work too well it should be where this should be the last part to click in but this has to be the first part to go in so if the hard drive is slightly um, too tall it looks like this gets in the way and we can't push this in um, there might be a possible way you'd have to basically keep this held up like this somehow um, but other than that let me see, can I somehow pull this upwards a little? No? Yeah, that's weird. Okay, so I don't know. You'd have to put some kind of like foam or something underneath to hold that up. Um, either that or you might have to take this rubber piece of uh, on here out. Okay, um, I think other hard drives have like a little bit shorter here maybe. And maybe that's why it's not wanting to work right. Um, I'm going to see if I can get a little bit of like paper towel in there and then maybe that can compress so it will help. All right. So I'm going to kind of get a piece of paper towel like this and kind of just roll it up a little and put that under there. And this will kind of help prop the hard drive up or the SSD up. And maybe that will prop it enough that we can do this. So let's find out. All right. And you can make sure it stays crumpled up. Okay, so we just crumple it up like this and let's get that under there and see if that will hold it up slightly barely holds it up I don't know if that will be enough all right let's get this in and that actually worked so you can see now it's actually in place let me see if I take the paper back out if it will still work so let's take the SSD back out here all right let's see if it works without that being in there that in and okay wait yeah no mm, I get oh yeah it worked okay so we got that lump so actually what happened was these side ones weren't going in right so you have to kind of push these side clips in first um, and this thing is on top of the drive but once you get it completely flat you can push it and it will shove it behind the SSD all right so that's pretty much how you do it also there's a battery reset hole here that you can press with a needle or a pin um, and that will allow you to basically reset um, kind of like, I, I think it does like a BIOS reset. Um, sometimes if your computer doesn't turn on or it doesn't start up properly, you can use that little hole to reset it. Press that for about 15 seconds and usually that will get it to reset. Anyways, this computer was having issue with the built-in storage. I did check with a Windows boot drive and I can actually see that... Um, the operating system is um, not the operating system but the data and stuff is still there so most likely it's caused by a um, corrupt OS 
All right, we'll plug this in. But um, yeah, other than that, that's all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. Um, I'm going to have to turn back on the um, UEFI boot mode because I changed it to legacy mode. All right, so it's usually F2 or delete. We're going to go to boot here. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, boot. Change the boot mode. Press enter there and go to UEFI. Oops, sorry. So I went to the boot boot mode like see I'm changing it to UEFI if for some reason your stuff doesn't boot in UEFI mode um, you might have to change it to legacy but yeah they don't have a separate option for secure boot so you can't turn secure boot mode off um, you'd have to turn it to UEFI mode for it to change that all right so there we go and then I think F12 is to change the boot device I don't know these models are all different um, here you can see the other model travel mate B all right, let's see if F12 works. Okay, I guess F12 doesn't work. I think it's just because it didn't detect the boot device. So we're going to boot from my USB now. Interesting. It doesn't want to even boot from my USB drive. Let's close this. This USB drive should be detected as um, UEFI secure boot. So I don't know why it doesn't want to work. Let's try using the USB 3 port on this side and see if it does the same thing. All right, let's see. I don't think F12 changes the boot device on this one, but let's go ahead and see now. Yeah, that's weird, it doesn't like it. So I guess we're gonna um, just go back to, um, go back to legacy mode, all right. Legacy, okay. And we'll just exit saving changes. And then let's go ahead and try this now. Pressing F12, but I don't think that's what changes the boot device for Acer. All right, it's resetting because the BIOS settings. Okay, so when it boots from the US or from legacy mode, it does all this extra stuff here. Um, I'll probably have to see if the boot options let me change stuff to change the hard drive to the first boot device or something, but um, here we go. What is it doing? It's just on a black screen now. It's restarting itself. And there we go, it's booting from my USB. All right, and then after that, we can just do the regular Windows install. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. Um, I am going to delete all the partitions um, and then we'll see um, because it looks like their internal memory is still okay. So I'm going to have to test that and see uh, because then I can install the windows to the new SSD and then once it's done I can migrate all the data over. And then if that works I can try migrating the data back over to the internal SSD and then that way they will have like a complete um, Windows install on their old SSD and they don't need to replace this this one. All right, so yeah, other than that, that's pretty much all there is to it. All right, we're gonna go here and go to next. I just press tab to go to next, press enter, press enter to install now. And this is pretty much the standard Windows install procedure, so. Yeah, so this is more like a um, hard drive SSD upgrade install, as well as a Windows um, 10 install tutorial. <laughs> okay, so you can see setup is starting. We gotta wait. Okay, we don't have a product key here, so we'll say don't have a product key. I'm pretty sure it's Windows 10 Home, so we're going to leave that on there. Press Enter to go next. All right, and then we're going to have to check. I accept, spacebar, enter, go down to custom, enter. And here you can see all this stuff. Unallocated space on this 480 gig drive, nothing is there. 
and then here you can see the stuff from the internal drive the internal drive is only 500 or 57.1 gigs so it could be that's the issue maybe it didn't have enough storage but anyways you would just press enter on there and then follow the on-screen prompts and that's pretty much it so again hopefully this video helped thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next one all right let's drop this bike